welcome. I would like to thank you, Cetrus, and to all participants. And it's a great honor for me to be here, and I'm very happy. And I'm looking and I'm remembering my memories. Twelve years ago, I was in the same building, and I was the chairman of the youth branch of the Motherland Party, which was established, founded by the Rutherford, and I was in the same building, and I made a speech. And after 12 years, I'm again here, and I'm making a speech as a member of the parliament. So it's a destiny and it's life. Thank you, all of you. The word new is very famous nowadays in Turkey. You know, when you talk with everybody, even on the streets, they will talk about the new, new Turkey, new CHP. Even nowadays, new AKP after uh, Prime Minister, now the President, Tayyip Erdogan. So everybody's talking and debating on the word new. But if I had asked you before, my speech, who had invented this word, New Turkey, I'm sure the majority of you would have replied that the uh, ex-Prime Minister and the President Tayyip Erdogan had invited, had invented the New Turkey, but it's not correct. 30 years ago, the founder of the Motherland Party, the Turkey Turkey, the Prime Minister and the President of Turkey, he first used this word after the military intervention, and he said that everywhere, at every corner of Turkey, now we are building the New Turkey, with new reforms, with new steps. So, according to me, today Tayyip Erdogan is a poor imitation of Turgutuzal and AKP is a poor imitation of Motherland Party. When you will ask questions, I will reply, but I never accept admit AKP as a central right party. So, this is another topic. So, but being a representative of the opposition party, I would like to mention that, does not mean to oppose to all policies of AKP does not mean to criticize all the steps that were taken by Tayyip Erdogan. So, as an opposition party, as a member of the parliament from the opposition party, we should learn immediately if there is something right to say right to this, and if there is something wrong, look, there is a, this is a wrong. If we had been in the government, we wouldn't have done this. We would have done this in the right way. So, I think we should, uh, we should have a self-criticism. For CHP and also MHP. Why citizens they don't vote for us? Because if you all the time criticize, if you all the time oppose, and if you all the time say bad to everything, then people start. For 12 years they are in the government, they are the only ruling party, so all the things which were made by AKP were or are wrong, it cannot be. So if we are talking about New Turkey, I should accept and I should admit that. If I think the use of 90s in Turkey, in some parts, AKP did very good reforms, especially in an economic field. So, in the 90s, there were two main central right parties, in which one, Motherland Party, I hold different important positions. Motherland Party, Navatan Party, and two bad parties, Doriot Party. Political crisis, economic crisis, interest rates were high political instability and fight dispute between the central right parties, Motherland Party and Turkmen Party, all the time, during the 1980s and 1990s. So the citizens were fed up with that and they wanted to punish all political parties and they wanted to change the system. Erdogan was the mayor of Istanbul. He did good jobs during his uh, term. He made a lot of mistakes, but he did good jobs. He knocked all doors and he first uh, used women in politics. They started to knock the doors. Istanbul, I live in Istanbul, I know where we are. They knocked every door, and 1994, they won uh, the Istanbul municipality. Then they left the uh, Welfare Party, they founded Justice and Development Party. And as I told you, the all citizens were fed up with that, the old political parties. They wanted to punish the political parties, they wanted to change the system, so they came on power. So in an economic field, they accomplished and they made some good things. But I would like to separate AKP and New Turkey in two parts. AKP, Justice and Development Party. So I would like to give some examples about justice. So can we talk about New Turkey nowadays, if we talk about justice? What did AKP do? So I would like to share some examples with you. And also we shouldn't forget why AKP is so, so successful. One reason, all central right parties, political parties, but the second, this is my idea, you accept or not, but this is my idea, the military effect, the Turkish army's effect in Turkish political system. 
During the 1980s and 1990s, the chief of staff of the Turkish army, he was much more effective than the political leaders. And I remember I was the chairman of the uh, youth branch of Istanbul and the motherland party. We were discussing also these days. The military and the Turkish army was very strong. So in the surveys, the people were saying that the most reliable institution is the Turkish army, but the backside, behind the curtain, behind the scene, they also wanted to get rid of the Turkish army and the political system. So the, the people I know very well on the street, they were saying that, okay, we love our army, we respect our army, but soldiers should stay in the military base. So if you are talking about politics, politicians should talk about politics. So Erdogan also used this, and he came on power. So this, this was the second major factor, I think, why AKP came on power, and why for 12 years uh, they are on power. First, economic reasons, economical reasons, and uh, the second was the military. But I would like to share some examples with you about the justice. During the local elections, eight months ago, you know the TRT, this is the state channel, Turkish Radio Television uh, Corporation. Between 22nd February and uh, 2nd March, they allocated 13 hours 22 minutes for AKP, for their advertisements, for their meetings, and for their demonstrations. 13 hours 22 minutes. We are the main opposition party, CHP. They allocated only 45 minutes to us, and they allocated 48 minutes to MHP, the third biggest opposition party. So, before the local elections, just remember the 2011 elections. AKP got 50 persons, approximately 50 persons. CHP got approximately 25 persons, so half. So, if you are giving 13 hours to AKP in a state channel, normally, if we are logical, then you should have given 6 hours to CHP. But what did they state channel? And you know how state channel stands? by the citizens' taxes. And they gave only 45 minutes to us and 48 minutes to MHP. So, during the 1980s and during the 1990s, I told you that there was a 100% military tutelage, military domination. Erdogan came on power. He changed that, but now one party rule and one man show. So now Erdogan's tutelage and Erdogan's domination. Everybody is afraid of him, the businessmen, the civil society organizations, the artists, the players, everybody. So, what we look to the televisions, we watch. What Erdogan says, then everybody obeys Erdogan. So, I can tell you that if you compare it to the 1980s and 1990s, the roles are same, but the players are changed. 1980s and 1990s, military soldiers, but there was a tutelage and domination. Now Erdogan, tutelage and domination. Second example, 2010, there was a referendum in Turkey. And what AKP representatives told us, they said that we would make some amendments in the Turkish judicial system. So by these amendments, the Turkish justice system would be in the Western standards. And there was a referendum. CHP, Republican People's Party, and MHP said no. They said yes. And they made some amendments. And the citizens said yes. So they started to talk. Look, we changed. Now the Turkish justice system is in the Western standards. So we did this, AKP, New Turkey. But you know, on the 17th, 17th of December, the political scandals one year, one year ago, they went back and they changed again the justice system. Now. The just, justice system is much more worse if you compare it to 2010. When you ask them in the parliament, in television, in debates, what did you do? Why you changed the justice system? Because in the referendum 2010, you were telling that we would have a justice system like in Western standards. But what happened in three years, in four years, you changed? They cannot give any example and they cannot reply. But the most important thing, the newspapers and the journals cannot write a lot because they are afraid of Erdogan. There is one institution, its name is uh, Turkish Court of Accounts. And this institution is the only institution that controls the Turkish Grand National Assembly. Every year, before the budget sessions, they write report and send to the parliament. 
So with this report, the member of the parliament, from the opposition party, from the ruling party, the journalists, the public, they can see what the ruling party did in one year. Expenses, policies, everything about the laws, bills, everything. For 88 years, this institution was writing a report and was sending to the parliament. For two years, they cannot send this report to the parliament. You know why? Because AKP, Justice and Development Party, changed the bill. And for two years, we cannot take reports from this institution. So nobody knows how much money Prime Minister is spending. What are they doing? What are, they, what are their hidden policies? So by these reports, we were controlling. Not me, not the opposition parties. All public. But for two years, they don't do this. We are debating on that. We are criticizing. We are quarreling in the parliament and we are saying them why you are not sending these reports to the parliament. Because this institution is the only institution that can control the Turkish National Assembly. But what? Prime Minister President Erdogan at that time, he was a Prime Minister, he gave an instruction and they changed the bill because they have a majority, majority in the parliament, you know. They changed the bill, finished. So this institution cannot send reports uh, to, the, uh, to the parliament. There are a lot of a lot of examples. As a summary, I say to you, and I would like to share again and again. If we are talking about New Turkey, I will tell you that much more polarization. Okay, all the time in Turkey, if you look back to the history, there was a polarization. Everywhere polarization, in the UK, in the US, in France, if we are talking about politics, sure it should be polarization. But believe me, I'm in politics for over 15 years, and I started from the youth branch. Even I'm reading the history, I'm talking with my father, with the old politicians, even during the 1970s, when people were killing each other in Turkey on the streets, you are from left, you are from right, there was no polarization like that. If you go to Turkey, and I'm sure you go, you travel a lot, if you read newspapers and books, a lot of things and watch uh, TV debates, you can easily understand that. The people are divided in two parts. One admires and they see him as a, I don't want to use this word, but they see him as a prophet. You know, they say, okay, if I don't say something, it's correct. It's finished. We cannot even discuss and we cannot debate on this. And the other side hates him. There is no middle class. And this is very dangerous, I think, for Turkey. Believe me, I'm not exaggerating and I'm, I'm not manipulating. People are discriminated. For example, if one side is reading one newspaper, the other side does not want to read this newspaper. If one side is watching one TV channel, the other side does not want to watch uh, this TV channel. There is a high polarization in Turkey, and which is very dangerous for the future of Turkey. Because Turkey is really different country in the Middle East. As uh, Professor Mohamed Chakmak said, we are the only country in the region our face is turned to the west, but our back is turned to the east. So, if you came to UK, and uh, if you go to Italy, France, Germany, if you talk with the people on the street, if you ask, how do you feel yourself? I think 99% of the people will tell you that I'm a British and I'm, a Euro I'm an European. Or I'm an Italian or I'm a European. If you go to Turkey, some people will tell you that I feel myself as a European. Some people will tell you that I'm a Kurdish. Some people will tell you that, no, I don't like European Union, I'm, I'm, I'm an Eastern uh, person. So, there are a lot of different types of people. So, if the polarization is you be like that, so it will be a dangerous for the future of Turkey. But Erdogan, the President Erdogan, uses that. Because he saw that, I think, according to me, with a high polarization, he's manipulating his voters. And they are voting for Erdogan, but with a polarization, because the other side all the time is attacking to Erdogan, and they say, look, they are attacking Erdogan, so Erdogan is doing the right thing. So we should vote for him, and we should support more Erdogan. I think Erdogan is using, and Erdogan manipulates the polarization. Maybe politically, it's good. It's a strategy, I don't know. But for the future of the Turkey, for the new Turkey they use, it's, it's very dangerous. But these are the things that all we know. What should we do as an opposition party? As I told you that, we should have a self-criticism.
very powerful 12 years, and in all elections they won. And they increase their roles, which is very rare in the political system, even in Turkey, even everywhere in the world. I'm talking with the people, they complain, they criticize, but they say, I'm still voting uh, for AK. Why? Because Erdogan is a political leader, he's so, so strong, and because of the economic reasons, most of the Turkish people, they took money from the banks. I don't say this is a bad thing, they should. Because I'm a businessman also, besides my political career, I use many times and my brother loans from the banks. It's very normal. But people are afraid. They say if AKP will go, if the ruling party will be changed, if CHP and MHP will come, what we will do? Maybe interest rates will be high, maybe the political instability will have again as the uh, years of 90s or 80s. So we should tell people that as a CHP. Look, Nothing will happen if AKP will go. We are here, we have experts, we understand very well from the economy. So if AKP will go, nothing will happen. The interest rates will not be high and we should knock more doors because they are working a lot. They have media, they have newspapers, they have TV channels, they have money. You know, because in politics, if you don't have money, if you don't have uh, sources, you cannot do anything. If you compare CHPs, Sources with AKP, we have less sources. But what we can do if we work more, more, more than AKP, we can success. But sometimes we have some problems inside a political party. And we couldn't learn this, you know. AKP guys, AKP people, they quarrel and they have a dispute in the room. When they go outside, one voice, single voice. They support each other, so nobody can understand what's happening inside the room. But in CHP, we are always discussing and we are debating on that. Our representatives quarrel with each other, have dispute with each other. Even before going out of the room, all the journals and all the newspapers know what's happening inside the room. So this is not a good thing. I think we should change this culture. What can I push the and we, as a new members of the CHP, as I shared with you, I'm coming from Central, right? Different political background. We are working hard for that. And I think my idea, maybe he agrees or not, uh, Mr. Mohamed Chapman, we should be much more brave for the Kurdish <coughs> issue. Because in Turkey, there are two main regions. We have seven regions, but two main regions which are dominant in politics. One is the Black Sea region. Why? Because the people in the Black Sea region mainly they are conservative. They are religious, and the Kurdish people mainly they live in the eastern and uh, southeastern part of Turkey. All the time we say, we wrote a report in 1989 as a CHP, a Kurdish report, you know, but it was 30 years ago. So we should say new things, and we should be much more brave, we should have much more courage about the Kurdish issue. Because people are waiting to hear new things from CHP. And there's also one debate, New Turkey, New CHP. I always say, there's one political party, there's one CHP. No old CHP, no new CHP. Only new CHP, more young people, more women, more brave politics, and more, uh, how do you say, more, more efforts, you know, with Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu. We know that it's not easy because AKP is so, so strong, but from now on, we should talk about the elections which will be held in 2015. Because AKP representatives and members of the parliament, they say, it's not hidden. If we win again, and if we win 330 seats in the parliament, which will let them to go to the referendum, they will change the system in Turkey. And they will ask to the citizens. We don't know what will be the result. But if they will have the 330 seats in the parliament, they will have a right to go to the referendum. And they will ask the citizens, parliamentary system or presidential system. So this is the last chance, I think, for Turkey, for CHP, for all opposition parties. And as a main opposition party, we have much more responsibilities if we compare with the MHP and other parties. So if we can solve our internal problems, I'm sure that we can compete with them and we can beat them. Because after Taliban, they started their a lot of problems. We can easily see in the parliament. 
because we are talking, they are friends, you know, we are talking with them and they are saying after Erdogan, with new prime minister, he cannot control the party, there are a lot of different voices in AKP, so we can use that, but how? If we work hard. So, as a summary, he told also, the new Turkey is not invented by AKP, but Erdogan knows one thing very well, he knows how to manipulate, he knows how to create a perception. In politics, you know perception is reality. So Erdogan, for over one year, he's talking everywhere in Turkey, new Turkey, new Turkey. So when they talk, even member of the parliament, in the parliament from AKP, they say, before us, after us. For example, they say, today we are the 16th biggest economy in the world. And they say, we are proud of that. We did this AKP, okay? I told you that as a representative of the opposition party. They did a lot of good reforms in an economic field. But we took those out. 1985, Turkey was the 15th biggest economy of the world. So this is not a new success. But how he is using and manipulating, we did this. With an AKP, Turkey is the 16th biggest economy of the world. But 25 years ago, we were the 15th biggest economy of the world. We should tell more to the citizens and we should be much more on the streets as a CHD. If we cannot achieve this, if we cannot manage the process, I'm afraid that the system will be changed in Turkey and they will have a referendum. They have money, they have media, they have newspapers, they have TV channels, so they can manipulate the people and the parliamentary system can be changed. And now that one is so powerful, everybody is afraid of him. If the presidential system will come, I cannot imagine what will happen. One man show, one man rule. And believe me, we have some deal uh, proposals in the parliament. And we are talking with AKP guys, a member of the parliament from AKP, they don't know anything. They say Erdogan is sending uh, the deal proposals to us, and we should say yes or no. So, right